right, today's video, we're going to take a look at the NECA Toys Ultimate Back to the Future line. We have Marty McFly from 1985, we've got Marty McFly from 2015, and of course, we've got Biff Tannen from 1955. As you can see from the packaging right out of the gate, we got the theatrical movie poster for Marty from 85 and 2015. Nice little Velcro box, got a nice little glam shot here on the left, as well as the open window box so you can look into the figure and the accessories. On the side, we have the name of the figure, Ultimate Marty McFly, as well as a nice little Easter egg where it shows the time stamps for each of the three films. On the back, it shows the 35th anniversary collection, Marty McFly from, you know, 85, the Tales from Space version, 2015, and of course, Biff Tannen. So it's collect them all, a couple of more glam shots. Same thing over here with 2015. We got the iconic theatrical movie poster for Back to the Future Part Two. Glam shot inside of Marty holding the hoverboard. Nice picture of the figure and the accessories. And again, Ultimate Marty McFly, the timestamps. And you'll notice on the 35th anniversary collection down here at the bottom, we also have Doc Brown, who will be coming later on in the lineup. So anxious to get him. But to take the absolute cake is the Biff Tannen because it has this amazing gray sports almanac packaging which looks absolutely fantastic. Makes me wish I was not an out of the box collector, so I may have to hang on to this box, but great look at the figure and the accessories inside, but let's go ahead and get these guys out of their plastic prison and examine them up close, shall we? All right, starting things off, we've got Ultimate Marty McFly from 1985 here. Got his iconic puffer vest jacket, as well as his Canadian tuxedo, AKA the dual denim jacket setup with the denim jacket and the denim jeans. A lot of great paint detail and weathering look on here. Nice line work, lots of great wrinkles and things like that. Uh, the face, to me, it looks like Michael J. Fox. Unfortunately, just like, it's not a bad sculpt, I don't wanna say that. It's not a bad sculpt. It could have been better though. To me, the only thing I can really describe um, why it's just slightly off, it's just like, this is Marty McFly with makeup on. That's the way it looks to me. This is Michael J. Fox with a lot of foundation on. Um, it just looks overtly too smooth as far as his skin. Um, the sculpt underneath the paint and everything looks great. That does look like Michael J. Fox to me, but it's just, for whatever reason, the skin looks way too smoothed out, like he's got a ton of caked on makeup on there. And that's the only thing that really kind of detracts from me. But for $29, this is still the best Back to the Future Marty McFly you can get, absolutely hands down. Uh, great, again, weathering detail on this jacket, lots of line work, buttons. The jacket isn't removable, but you can open it up there. You can see his suspenders. You can even see, you know, a little bit of color for his shirt underneath his collared shirt there. And then on the denim there, you pull the puffer vest jacket just a little bit back there. See if we can get it. Yeah, there's a little bit of a guitar pin on there, which is great. Got his rolled up sleeves here. So got the, the Casio watch on his wrist, or the, you know, the fake Casio, because you can't, can't get the Casio logo that small. Uh, jeans, again, excellent dingy line work for that nice washed look. Got his dingy looking sneakers. As you can tell, there is no Nike swoosh logo. Obviously some licensing issues there, but that's fine. You, you get the, the drift. You know exactly what they're going for without them finishing out the swoosh on the sneakers. Marty comes with all sorts of great accessories. We have a interchangeable head. This is the Stylin Profilin Marty with glasses, looking real cool, almost Terminator-esque with those aviator glasses. Comes with his iconic skateboard, and what I think they did the best job here on the skateboard is number one, it actually has the Madrid skateboard sticker. I mean, this thing is a spot on replication of what he had in the film. Madrid skateboards, of course, was a huge skateboarding brand back in the 80s. Grip tape, it doesn't really have like the, the sandpapery texture on top of the skateboard, but that's fine. Um, the wheels actually do roll. The trucks don't rotate, so you can't like pivot and you know spin around. One thing I do wish was maybe there there was a, a peg on the skateboard. I get maybe why that decision wasn't made. So, you know, you just want that clean look of the skateboard while he's holding it. But for me personally, I would have loved to have a peg on there. That way I can put Marty on the skateboard without having to worry about him falling off. He will balance on there if you get him, you know, set just right. But it'd be so much easier if there was a, a standard peg on the skateboard that you could utilize and put in his peg hole feet. 
He also comes with a couple other hand accessories. We've got this gripping hand that goes around a guitar. We've got a hand that has a guitar pick in it, so that's nice. And then we have a little more open palm grip. There we go, get the focus. And then of course, speaking of guitar, we have his iconic yellow guitar with the strap, so you can throw it over his shoulder. He's got his going to school backpack, one sling over the shoulder. Nice details on here. Again, back with that weathered, dingy look that they've done oh so well with other figures in the line. And then, of course, we have the iconic VHS camcorder. Lots of great detail here. Excellent, excellent looking figure. As far as articulation, so Marty can look down this much. And I just ripped his head off. Oh my God, sorry Marty. And he can't really look up too much just because the back of the puffer jacket blocks him. You can, of course, exorcist style him, 360 degree rotation of the head, a little bit side to side, arms raise up that high, 360 degree swivel up there. We have a double jointed elbow, which is nice, so you can get his hands really close up to the face and all sorts of great added posability there. There is also a swivel at the high point of the joint and the low point of the joint, which is nice. And then, of course, we have 360 swivel of the hand as well as a horizontal hinge to bend his wrist in and out. There is a mild ab crunch in there, but you're honestly not going to be able to do much of anything just because of his clothing. So to say there's an ab crunch, yes. Can you really functionally use it? Not really. There is no waist swivel, so that is different. Um, kind of honestly shocked to see that, so no waist swivel whatsoever. The legs, however, do have quite a bit of articulation. Marty's leg can kick out quite far. Back, not so much. Can spread them quite wide. So that's nice. And then we have a single joint at the knee with the hinge and everything being well hidden in the denim. So that looks good. And then down at the feet, we have the ability to rock it forward, rock a shoe down, and then a little bit of side to side. And you can rotate it all the way around as well. And then of course we have these standard peg holes at the bottom of the feet. So overall, great looking figure. I just wish the face paint job, I guess is what we'll say, could have been a little bit better. And I do wish for whatever reason we had a peg on the skateboard to help balance Marty on there. So examining scale, we've got Biff standing right at about seven and a half inches and then slightly smaller, we got Marty at about six and a half inches, your standard bully versus little guy scenario. And before we get started examining Biff, I just wanna say how impressed and pleased I am to see that NECA Toys is actually making these figures available for the most part to the masses. You can find them on Amazon, Walmart, Target, Entertainment Earth. The fact that you don't have to sell a kidney or a vital organ to be able to find or afford these figures is very impressive so looking at Biff first of all absolutely nailed the facial likeness of him um, yeah he does have that makeup cake skin type of effect that Marty did but overall I think the likeness on Biff here is much more dialed in than what we got for the Michael J Fox figures um, really I don't, I don't know how else to explain it again other than the fact that it just looks overtly smooth with a lot of makeup but the detail in the sculpt overall I think is absolutely spectacular. Great line work, you know, intricacies on the hair. Of course, he's got his jacket. It is not removable. It does open up quite a bit. It's held on by a little piece here at the bottom, so don't try to open this too much because you will rip that. There we go. It's literally just held on by a small part that is glued together, so don't go ripping this jacket open too much. As far as articulation, he's gonna have everything that Marty has and then some. He actually does have a functional ab crunch. So get that, get that. And then additionally, he has a waist swivel. So you can spin the waist 360 degrees. Other, other than those two things, everything's gonna be the same with the arms, the legs, the joints. All that is gonna be the exact same range of mobility. And for accessories, he has a secondary head swap. Got the angry, raged-induced Biff here with his open mouth, his eyebrows raised. Again, great likeness to the actor. Good job on this face sculpt. 
We have some interchangeable hands, of course, because, you know, what bully doesn't need a set of closed fists so he can punch people and, you know, threaten their nerdy lives by beating them to a bloody pulp because that's what bullies do. And then we have an additional hand with the grip as well as the extended thumb upwards. And it wouldn't be Biff if it didn't have the Gray Sports Almanac. As front and back, very tiny details on here, but excellent job nonetheless recreating the iconic Gray Sports Almanac. And then we have a couple of little flyers. This is a nice little detail here. This is the auto body repair bill for Biff's car. Dated November 22nd, 1955. These are all the damages to Biff's car. And then we have a nice little flyer for the Saturday Night Dance Enchantment Under the Sea. Be there or be square, it says. Nothing on the back, but a nice little flyer for the dance. And then lastly, we have this lockbox, which actually does open. There we go. Now we've got it open. Inside we can see, it's kind of hard to get the light in there, but it's a Ooh La La magazine, number 29. So awesome detail that we've got ooh la la in there. You can of course throw your gray sports almanac in there, hide it, put it back in the lock box, and then you're good to go. And then lastly, we've got Marty McFly 2015. And I think they did a great job with the minor details of the costume and everything. Excellent job with the paint on the hat. I mean, as you remember from the movie, the hat has that very reflective, shiny, almost metallic material. They did a great job with the paint here. So we get the various different colors. Uh, one thing I did notice is got some sloppy paintwork here on the ear. So missed a bit of his hair and it looks like he's got, you know, a blonde highlight going through there. So a whoopsie there for a QA. Same thing on the other side, kind of a sloppy, sloppy job behind the ear and around the ear as far as painting the Hair, I can fortunately touch that up myself, but um, just kind of a bummer to see that overall. Articulation, everything is gonna be the exact same for 1985 Marty that it is for this figure. So not really gonna waste any time on that. Looking at the costume again, you're able to open up the jacket. Can't take it off or anything like that, but nice look at his shirt. Lots of line work and wrinkles. His pockets of the jeans flipped outwards because that is the style in the future a lighter denim wash than the previous 85 Marty. Of course, his iconic self-lacing Air Mags. There is no Nike logos anywhere on these shoes. Details of the button and the ribs of the jacket, you know, changes sizes and has air dry and things like that. Overall, I'm happy with the figure. Again, the face detail, it looks like Michael J. Fox. Could it be better? Yes. Is it the worst? No. So. That's, that's okay by me. Then we have an interchangeable head with Marty without the hat. This one is a little better sculpt in my opinion, but again, looks overly smooth with, uh, just looks like he's got makeup on, a little too much makeup on. But overall, you can tell that this is supposed to be Michael J. Fox, AKA Marty McFly. We've got the iconic hoverboard, of course, and it has some interchangeability as well. Um, we've got NECA logos instead of Mattel logos. That's fine, it doesn't bother me. That's licensing in a nutshell but we can remove this strap out. Comes with a interchangeable swap in peg there. That way you can stand Marty on the board. And then this middle section also comes off. I may have to get a, yeah, I may have to get a blade. I don't recommend like trying to bend this because this hoverboard is a solid piece of plastic. So if you're trying to like bend it to pop this piece off, you're likely gonna accidentally probably break it in half. So don't do that. Comes with a secondary Interchangeable piece here, it just snaps on in those holes. And now we've got a nice little peg opening that we can come and use this included base stand. Get in there. So now we can mount the hoverboard on this clear stand. We can put Marty's peg hole on the bottom of his air mag there. After some clever balancing act, we finally got Marty on his hoverboard there. Again, just utilizing the peg hole in the bottom of his foot and the peg on the board, as well as the clear base stand. Pose him however you want. Other accessories for Marty. We have one interchangeable hand here. Open gripping hand. And then we've got the bottle of Pepsi Perfect. It's 
probably gonna be hard to see, but it actually says Peppy Perfect instead of Pepsi. Again, licensing, branding, doesn't bother me a bit. I completely understand why NECA would have to change that. And it does come with the clear stand case, so you can put your bottle of Peppy Perfect inside the case. At the end of the day, I'm happy with all three figures. My only real concern and gripe was the paintwork on this specific Marty 2015 head where the paint was around the ear and they just didn't finish the job on the hair. I'll have to touch that up. Not a big fan of that, but again, for $30 and the amount of accessories and the level of detail we're getting from NECA, I'll give them a pass for this one. So let me know in the comments down below what you think of these figures, which ones you guys are thinking about picking up and also if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button, share this video with your friends if you found the information helpful. And as always, thanks for watching guys. It really means a lot.